2021, 9-11, Directed Energy Weapons, and HARP, The Ongoing Perception Management of 9-11 Evidence and Truth, December 31, 2008. Alfred Weber speaks at a Madison, Wisconsin conference, entitled, Science and Politics of 9-11, What's Controversial and What's Not. Quote, the depopulation matrix is designed to be activated by a 9-11-style false flag state terror attack against a major urban center in the U.S., possibly using nuclear, biological weapons, or advanced exotic weapons, such as directed energy weapons, which I think Dr. Wood has done a magnificent job of really holding her space and bringing us to this, unquote. And here is a short exchange between Alfred Weber and Lauren Murray on Sophia Smallstorm's expansion RBM Internet Radio Broadcast, November 14, 2008. Alfred Weber, just run through in five minutes why you think HARP was the instrument that caused the molecular dissociation and the controlled disappearance of the World Trade Center. Lauren Murray, well, it was really Judy Wood's presentation which had the physical evidence and the photos which are not available. They haven't been. Alfred Weber. Without, without referring to Dr. Judy Wood, in your own words, why do you think HARP caused it? In the last few months, I've written about how I think key figures in what might be called the 9-11 official truth movement seem to be involved in a mixture of cover-up and muddle-up regarding the discussion of and general conclusions about the most important 9-11 related evidence of all, the Hutchison Effect evidence, and that related to Hurricane Aaron. One other author has also written about some general problems with the 9-11 official truth movement. In writing these articles, I frequently mention the concept of free energy, which means being able to extract useful energy from the environment or from within materials themselves without burning in either a chemical or nuclear sense. Nikola Tesla called it radiant energy, as he proposed it was present everywhere, as sunlight is on a clear day. Others call it vacuum energy, or zero-point energy, or even perhaps orgone energy. Mainstream science usually states that zero-point energy cannot be extracted and made to do useful work because that would violate certain laws of physics. Experimental evidence does call this conclusion into question, however. Having written these articles, I conclude that some of the people involved seem to have had three main objectives. 1. To try to tarnish or discredit the reputation of Dr. Judy Wood as a means of drawing attention away from the evidence she has discussed in her comprehensive pictorial studies, posted at drjudywood.com. 2. To prevent people from making the connection between 9-11 and free energy technology and the use of weather control technology on that same day. 3. To play down or ignore Dr. Wood's key TAM case against NIST contractors, some of whom SAIC, ARA, and Boeing, just happened to be involved in directed energy weapons research, assembly, or manufacture. For example, on the seventh anniversary of 9-11, Jim Fetzer appeared on the Richard Surratt CFRB Toronto talk radio show to discuss 9-11 research developments. Fetzer mentioned none of the profound ideas listed above, preferring instead to mention a new book by David Ray Griffin. However, despite efforts to obfuscate, discredit, and muddle up discussion of 9-11, Hurricane Aaron, and the Hutchison effect, more people are still becoming aware that this information is out there, not least because of Dr. Wood's appearance on several radio and reasonably well-known non-internet radio programs, such as those of Raleigh James and Richard Surratt. It is worth noting that Dr. Wood appeared on the Richard Surratt show one week after Jim Fetzer, and at that time Richard Surratt seemed particularly surprised to learn from Dr. Wood of the proximity of Hurricane Aaron to New York City on 9-11. The New Chapter So let us now turn to what seems to be a new chapter in this ongoing saga of the marginalization of what, can be strongly argued, is the most important and comprehensive 9-11 research that has been made public. The latest tactic seems to be to blame HARP for the destruction of the World Trade Center complex and simply pretend that Dr. Judy Wood and half of the research she has completed does not exist 
As you will see from the media referenced here, this tactic seems to have come into play sometime between August 2007 and November 2008, although further evidence narrows this period to between April and November 2008. At this point, it should be noted that in the press release I posted to introduce Dr. Wood's Hurricane Aaron study, Chapter 15, and her associated presentations, I specifically stated, quote, "A later part of the study examined some of the data relating to patterns of earthquakes in 2008, and possibly associated unusual weather patterns, which may be related to secret or partially disclosed environmental modification technology such as HARP." However, the study does not establish any clear links between HARP and the events in New York on 9/11. Unquote. The players. The two main players in this new chapter are Alfred Weber, an international lawyer, peace and environmental activist, prominent in the nascent field of exopolitics, and Lauren Murray, a geoscientist who has traveled the world to discuss and expose the dangers of radioactive contamination. Caused by the use of depleted uranium in modern artillery shells. With this starting point, it seems hard to imagine how two such people could play a role in actively covering up the links between 9/11, free energy technology, and weather control. Exopolitics and depleted uranium. I first came across Alfred Weber in 2004 or 2005. When I found out about his involvement in the controversial field of exopolitics, he wrote about this in his book *Exopolitics: Politics, Government, and the Law in the Universe*. A number of people shun him for his involvement in the field of exopolitics, but my own views on this subject may be substantially different to those of some people reading this article. So I leave you to explore other sections, found at checktheevidence.com, to find some reasons why I say this. I became aware of Lauren Moray's work as a result of seeing a film called *Beyond Treason*, and later I heard her speak as a guest on Jim Fetzer's Dynamic Duo program in June of 2007. I had also communicated with Alfred Weber some time in 2007, following my cursory involvement with the case of UK hacker Gary McKinnon. Here I was glad to learn that Alfred Weber seemed to be trying to help with Gary's case by getting several people in the exopolitics community. To make a joint statement in support of Gary, how could these two people possibly become negatively involved in the matter of Dr. Judy Wood's 9/11 research, in the manner which is described here? As I write this, I'm again feeling very uncomfortable with what the evidence has shown me. Madison Conference, August 4th and 5th, 2007. Both Alfred Weber and Lauren Murray attended Dr. Judy Wood's presentation at the Madison Conference, which was organized by Kevin Barrett and Jim Fetzer. At the conference, also Lauren Murray gave a presentation about depleted uranium, and Alfred Weber gave a presentation about false flag operations and the setting up of an international war crimes tribunal. As already shown above, Lauren Murray agreed because of the physical evidence shown in Dr. Judy Wood's Madison presentation. That something very unusual happened at the World Trade Center. It is worth reiterating that, at the time of the Madison Conference, Dr. Wood had only stated that some kind of directed energy weapon had been used to destroy most of the complex. She had not made the connection through a study of the evidence to either the Hutchison effect, nor had she considered the role of field effects associated with Hurricane Aaron, which was present over the Atlantic Ocean, closest to New York City, on 9/11. During his Madison presentation, Alfred Weber discusses some of the problems we, as people, currently have and possible ways we can solve them. In relation to environmental problems, he said that we must quote, shift to new breakthrough energy technologies, moving beyond petroleum and nuclear, which are the principal tools of the war crimes organization, to breakthrough fuelless, non-polluting, zero-point energy technologies that are now sequestered in the national security state. We shall see the relevance of this statement later in the article. From exposure to cover up, from clarity to muddle up. I open this article with two media clips. The second being recorded approximately 15 months after the first. Why did Alfred Weber champion the name of Dr. Judy Wood in August of 2007, then instruct that it not be mentioned in November of 2008? What had changed in that intervening period? 
My conclusion is that it has to do with the association of free energy technology with the events of 9-11. February 14, 2008 and April 2008 On February the 14th, 2008, Alfred Weber at his own home interviewed Dr. Judy Wood and John Hutchison to discuss the relationship between their respective research. The interview included a discussion of specific physical evidence related to 9-11. It was over an hour long although Dr. Wood and John Hutchison spent a little longer speaking with Alfred Weber. Links to the audios of the interviews were not, however, posted until Monday, April 21st, on Alfred Weber's Exopolitics blog. In the interview, Alfred Weber introduces Dr. Wood and John Hutchison as two very distinguished guests, and then reads out basic biographical information. He said that they will discuss the fact that photographic and video evidence suggests that the World Trade Center towers were destroyed using directed energy weapons. He then reads segments from the press release about Dr. Woods Hutchison Effects 9-11 study, which I had posted on the 30th of January, 2008. Weber reads these statements. Quote, In early January, 2008, Dr. Judy Wood posted a new study on her website, which relates effects seen in photographs taken before, during, and after the destruction of the WTC towers. However, Weber omits, at that point, the words, two effects seen in John Hutchison's ongoing experiments, as it clearly states in the press release. He repeats that he had the pleasure of attending Dr. Judy Wood's Madison presentation in August of 2007, and he described it as, quote, like attending a college seminar, because Dr. Wood is, indeed, a university professor. During the interview, Alfred Weber was told of the connection between Hutchison effect evidence and the effects seen at and near the World Trade Center. Weber even acknowledges that weaponized free energy technology should be disclosed and used for peaceful purposes, thus. At the 33-minute mark, Dr. Wood says, I don't know if it's the same thing as the Hutchison effect, but what I've learned from this is that here is something that does the same thing that we may see. Alfred Weber says, yes, and Dr. Wood continues, so we know it's possible. Weber says, right. At around 44 minutes, in the long recording referenced above, Dr. Wood suggests, quote, an amazing technology was used on 9-11, and Weber says, yes. Weber also appears to agree when Dr. Wood suggests that the technology could be used for good things. He states that her suggestion is, a, quote, very profound statement, unquote. Weber then suggests, around 45 minutes, that behind the black budget projects, there are these, quote, advanced technologies which have been developed at taxpayer expense for weapons applications, which could as easily be applied to new energy applications that would be to the benefit of the biosphere, unquote. He says, quote, whatever technology did this should be disclosed, John Hutchison also expresses his wish for the technology to be disclosed, and that his method of doing this is to appear in TV documentaries about the subject and talk about his work and experiments. Further, Weber suggested that Wood and Hutchison submit a paper to the IEEE, or Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, about their findings. This whole interview is analyzed in more detail in an appendix to this article. It is worth noting, at this point, that on Monday, March 10, 2008, Alfred Weber had Richard Gage of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth as a guest on his co-op radio broadcast. The Richard Gage interview is mentioned because some severe problems with the type of evidence he has been involved in promoting can easily be discovered. Strangely, though the Wood Hutchison interview was recorded in February of 2008, it was not broadcast until April of 2008. On the day before, a TV interview with Richard Gage was broadcast in the Vancouver area.